to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Terry Taylor joins me on the show today. Terry has over 32 years in the interior design and construction business. She holds both residential and commercial general remodeling Arizona contractor licenses, and she's also qualified for her NCIDQ certification in 1991. Terry is a nationally known interior design business expert and coach. She teaches and mentors interior designers to help them create successful businesses. Today, Terry is going to walk us through how she calculates budgets on the fly. And I can't wait for you to learn what a powerful tool this could be for your interior design business. Part of Terry's mission on this planet is to help interior designers get their firms organized and profitable. This mission is shared by our show sponsor, MyDoma Studio. MyDoma Studio is your complete interior design toolkit. This amazing workflow software enables you to organize design projects from beginning to end. No matter where your client or your team is located, you could be working remotely or in person seamlessly, keeping track of all the correspondence, the approvals, the product specs, everything in one place. Add to this the fabulous design community where you can ask questions, meet other like-minded, success-driven interior designers. It's a no-brainer to get started with your trial today. Go to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. So the other thing I want you to know about Terry is that she created in 2009 the Design Biz Blueprint, which maybe if you've been around may have heard of this. It is now called the Interior Design Business Academy. So pay close attention to the end of the show where Terry explains all the ways that you can access her help in building a profitable design firm. All right, let me introduce you to Terry. Hi, Terry. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Oh, glad to be here, Luann. Thank you. Yeah, so Terry, I love conversations like these because you have spent a career not only being an interior designer but working with and coaching interior designers. And so um, that's fun for me because we get to talk about, you know, the strategies for success that are not just unique to one design firm, but with your perspective, you have tested them not only with your own design firm, but with the, the men and women that you've coached. And you and I have decided to tackle flat fees and budget conversations today. So I'm yeah. very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. One yeah. of my favorite subjects. Yes, yes, <laughs> Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. So there's a lot of, you know, the word controversy is not the right word here because I don't think that it's, um, controversy implies that there's a negative connotation to something. I just think there's opinions. That's a a better word. There's a lot of opinions on should we be charging flat fees? Should we be charging hourly? How should we be doing it? And um, you, you do subscribe to the flat fee model and I've done a lot of reading about you and you certainly have had a lot of success with your various clients and Each of them, you know, for the most part, seem to have turned to a flat fee model. And what I understand is that I'm most intrigued about it, and it might not be the starting spot. So I'm going to start here. And if you're like, Luann, we got to take a step back, you just let me know. But I'm aware that you have the budget on the fly theory, where in the 10 minutes or so walking through a client's space, you're able to open that conversation about budget and get the, get you you, positioned as a designer for success. And I operate on that exact same premise in my interior, um, in my window treatment um, 
business where within five or 10, 15 minutes, I can throw a budget at you because of my 30 plus years experience. And that really does just go, oh, okay. Now we have a real conversation. Tell us how you do it and how you teach designers to do it for interior design. I would think that's much more difficult. Um, actually not. Actually okay. not. It's actually fairly easy. Um, one of the things that we have to recognize is when we say to a client, what's your budget, uh, they're deer in the headlights. Um, it is possible that they don't know. I mean, that's the answer. They don't know or they don't know, but they won't tell you, that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> but all of it's based on the fact that when you say that, what they hear is something more like, how much money do you have to spend? Exactly. And they get defensive. Okay. And so you're on the wrong side now. And what happens with most designers is they drop the conversation there and go, okay, well, I, you look around at the furniture and the way they're dressed and the neighborhood they're in and the cars they drive. Go, Okay. I think I got this. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that when you design without a budget, you're missing a huge piece of your programming. And when you go to present it, it's likely they will fall on the floor and faint over the price of everything. And then you have to go back and do it again with less expensive products. So you diminish the time you did and you don't get to charge more hours for that, by the way. Right. Right. So, so, you know, you, you cut your time in half and you cut your profit on the, on the product in half. So, I mean, it's a lose, lose for us all the way around. So what, what I know through my studies is that when we can talk about the cost of things, what would you be comfortable with paying for that thing? Um, they're happy to talk to us. Mm. Okay, so the invitation is after somebody says what well, you say, I don't know what the budget, what's your budget? They say, I don't know. Um, the invitation is, well, we could figure that out in a couple of minutes. Want to do it? Now, no client is going to say no if they're actually a client. Right. Because everybody wants to know what it's going to cost, right? You know, and if they say no, then it's actually you're, you're really not even talking to somebody who's who's interested in doing anything. So you know, you can jump into that very very easily. the The way you do it, say on a on a furniture job, is in your head um, pull up a furniture plan. Now I know that once you've been standing there talking to her for ten minutes, you've reworked that room ten times. You know, you put the sofa over there, and you squared up the rug, and you got the art down where it belongs. I mean, you got the whole thing figured out. So pick one of those ideas, and build a, a furniture plan out of it. You're going to ask for agreement on every piece of furniture in that plan, and you're going to find out what they're comfortable with paying. So when you say something like, well, let's put a pair of sofas in front of the fireplace, um, what are you comfortable with paying for a sofa? Now, you can get a couple of different answers. You might get an immediate answer because she's been out shopping. She saw one at Jones Furniture for $4,500 and thought it was great. Terrific. Right down $4,500 twice. Um, or she could say, I, I have no idea. I haven't been shopping. In which case... An RH catalog works really well, or Williams Sonoma, if you've got an older client, it's good to carry both of those <laughs> along with you. <laughs> you can take a look and say, well, let's see, what, what does RH charge for a sofa? Oh, it's $6,500. Are you good with $6,500 on a sofa? And what you're doing is you're asking questions to get agreement and to get yes answers back. You know, she can say, yeah, that would that would be OK. OK, you got a yes. What happens as you're running through all these pieces? If you can get someone to say yes to you three or four or five times, she's going to say yes when you ask to be hired. Mm -hmm. It's just human nature. It's a selling psychology. Right. It really just builds that way. All right. So what you're going to do is run through that whole room and ask for agreement on those prices. Um, and you don't want to tell her what the price is. You could suggest um, if she's, or if you if you didn't have a Williams Sonoma catalog, you could say, well, um, pretty decent quality starts at about six thousand dollars. Are you good with that? And she might say, well, you know, I saw one at Jones Furniture and I, uh, it was forty five hundred. Great. This is not about about telling her um, about quality of furniture or what she should buy or because you haven't been hired yet. Mm -hmm. OK. And you don't want to. Um, come out and say oh this room is going to cost x and then have designer w come behind you and say it costs a thousand dollars less and she'll get the job and we all know it's going to cost ten thousand dollars more right so so getting these agreements along the way is a way of of getting very close to your client and acting almost like a psychologist uh, think of it as as you know if you were 
uh, if you were sitting with the, the marriage counselor and said, <laughs> and she said, um, Mary, would you be happy if your husband took out the trash twice a week? And said, <laughs> yes, I'd be really happy if you would do that. Okay. It's the same sequence going on. Right. But what you do is build a budget piece by piece because people know what things cost and they'll talk about what things cost and what they're comfortable with. They just never added it all up. Right. So when you get the whole total on your yellow pad, you add it all up. Please use easy numbers. Don't put odd numbers in there because you make it hard to add. <laughs> make it, make it, you know, round them up and, and it, write the total. And so when you hit the bottom and if it's $51,300, you write it on there, you tear the piece of paper off and hand it to her and then shut your mouth. Right. Okay. First one who speaks loses. Right. Right, old sales thing, right? You and me are it's, like feathers here. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Right. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are they going to say? They're going to say, well, oh, I didn't know it was that much, but okay. That means you just sold the whole job. Mm. All right. You didn't sell a sofa. You sold the whole $51,000. Or you get something like, well, can you do it for 40 And you'd say, sure, I can. What parts do you want to take out? Right. <laughs> Throw the ball back. Okay. Exactly. It's not, the onus is not on you to make a $40,000 room, you know, a $50,000 room for 40. Right. Okay. Yes, I know you can do it, but do it for yourself or do it for your best friend. Okay. Don't, right. don't make it a business practice. Right. Right. So let me so, ask you a couple of questions hmm. about this before you keep going on it because there's a lot of great stuff in here. So yeah. I, if I imagine somebody less schooled in sales techniques, okay, Tara, we have to bring it to that level for our, our right. listeners. So sure. the thing is, is I'm here, I love it, I'm hearing you, right? And you're saying... <laughs> First of all, we do have to have done our own homework on this because we're not, I hear you, we're not going to sit there and say, oh, and one lamp, let me look up in restoration, one the one area rug, let me look in William Simone. We exactly. might do that for one or two references so that they know we're not pulling the number out of a hat. Uh -huh. But I got to imagine in real life that the strategy is to, to pull it out for one or two, but then say, and how about we, I, I think we need two lamps here. Let's say lamps you know, could you see a lamp being 250? You know what I mean? And now somebody's exactly. going to go, some person's going to say yes, and some person's going to say, but at Home Goods they're 99, right? Like this uh -huh. is informing us, right? Uh -huh. So my question to you is, in actually teaching somebody to do this strategy, what what happens in the nuts and bolts in that, Terry? So somebody says, oh, you know, a lamp would be 250, and somebody pushes you back and says, but at Home Goods they're 99. Do you put 99 on your budget or do you put 250? Because I got about four questions I want to ask you in clarifying this. So okay, that's good. the first one. <laughs> the first one is yes, you do because you you're not. Yeah, you're not gonna. All you're doing is collecting their information. Right, you're not now, arguing with them at this point. You're exactly, not pushing or them you're back. talking about quality or whatever any of the things. You're just collecting. Information information. Now you can collect information that is so low that it's obvious this is not a job. Right, 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 right. right. By the time you're done, if they yeah. say every single thing you say, they're like, not this, that, but that, then you're like, uh -huh. okay, you need to just go and do this yourself. I get that. Exactly. Okay. exactly. But it, here and vary. there, in the, what you're saying is in the moment, I, it, you've said it twice now, I'm going to repeat it because I just got it. We're not educating them in the moment on quality and value versus price. We're just ascertaining what's between their ears what are exactly. they thinking great exactly. clarifying point okay so yeah, yeah, in the moment good. here we are what you know with i thought we you know maybe it, I, and i love the way you explained it you said you know for example one of the ways this room could be and i'm not sure if it's going to be the way your room is because i got to give careful thought and consideration to it but let's just say for example we had two sofas flanking your fireplace right love that okay and so it's saying that this is not how I'm going to design your room. But you could see, a reasonable person could see that one design might include two fireplaces in this room. And the person is going to go, yeah, I get that. I thought about that myself, right? Uh -huh. So, okay. So whatever they put, whatever they put, and we're going. Now, are how – so we're going to do – if it needs an area rug, we're going to do the sofas. We're going to do an end table. We're going to do, we're going to do all these items. We have to oh. have done our homework. We have okay. to have an idea because – Again, we're not going to open up the book. So we we're going to say coffee table. In my experience, a coffee table can run anywhere from 500 to 2000. What, what, where are you comfortable? Is that where we do when we're not pulling out the book on everything? 
Well, you could. Yeah. Just, yes, you could. The other thing is that I would suggest that you have a cheat sheet. That's the way I always oh. did it. And it had my good, better, and best vendors right across, there. going across the top and then running down sofa, love seat, sectional, um, club chair, occasional chair, <laughs> cocktail table, end table, sofa table, you know, all the way down the line, all the pieces in a living room and then all the pieces in a dining room. And then <clears throat> I just went into the price books and looked up from my least expensive, expensive vendor that I would ever sell. All right. And everybody needs to have a limit, right? Right. Where, where their bottom end is, what the middle one is and what our high end is. And that can be different for different designers and different businesses based on who your ideal client is. Sure. Sure. Right. I love it. And so what you're saying is, you know, it's funny because my brother is a mover and he used to have this blank form and it listed every household item that you would have in in a room, theoretically based by room. And mm-hmm. so exactly as you said, he would, ha- but it was a form and it was, you know, and it would be living room and it would say sofas and he would just mark two. And if it say rugs, he would mark one. If it was Lansing, mark two. So you're saying that you actually could have this on your clipboard, say, uh-huh. and this way you don't necessarily have to even pull out an RH catalog. You can say, in my experience, you know, sofas are in ranges from this to this to this. And uh-huh. so now when somebody says, I don't know what I would spend on a sofa, you could just go, well, you know what? My, I have my good, better, best resources, and it goes anywhere from 2000 to 7500 for sofas. Where are you comfortable? Uh-huh. So that's exactly. how we're, I love this. I love exactly. this. Exactly. Because this is so, this is so easy to translate whether you have a minute of experience or 20 years experience i love this okay i have a couple more questions so now when we get to the bottom and you actually list it all out and it's no different Mm -hmm. than my brother he'd get the bottom and he'd list all the pounds right because he would say typical sofa is x amount of pounds and they'd say okay "Okay, this move is going to be x amount because it's this many pounds so you come to a final dollar amount but where where do you introduce the conversation that this is simply product, Terry, and this doesn't include the design fees? How do you put that in there? How do we get there? It's a yeah. good question. Very yeah. good question. Well, the, the next piece, well, the next piece, first of all, you want to get agreement on the budget of stuff because right. we want a big separation between stuff and design. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're not furniture salesmen. Right. Okay. It's not hooked together. So you want this, I call it the Grand Canyon in between <laughs> your design and what the furniture is so we get to, we get to the total you're going to total that out on a piece of paper and um, right out the end tear it off tear off the bottom and hand it over right yeah and and see what kind of reaction you get now once you get agreement on what that number is okay whether it be 51,000 or 45 or 40 or whatever whatever it ends up to be you can pull out a design fee out of that based on 15% of what the furniture budget is. Mm. Okay. Now that's a base number. That's a really easy number to sell. And the reason is, is that that's a very small number compared to the 51,000. Okay. Okay. So we'd be talking, well, about $7,500 would be the fee on that $51,000 living room. Okay. Okay? Now you don't want to say my fee is 15%. You want to keep that internal, okay? okay? And you don't really want to make it 7,500 even because that sounds like you didn't think about it. So let's make it 7,480, okay, on top of that. Now, you have the the key to presenting fees and getting fees, and we get, we've, uh, you know, I've taught people to get up into, we're getting up into 90, 80, $100,000 $100,000 fees on big build projects. The the key to it is to always say the budget number first and then my fee. So it would look like something like that. Okay, so we've agreed that we're going to redo the living room and you recap all the things she wanted, right? All the points that are really important to her. And our, our target budget is $51,000 and I'm sure we can do that. And my fee to pull all that together is $7,480. And if you'd like to give me a check for 3500 I could get this started today. We'll be back with our crew on Monday morning, do our measures and our photographs, and we'll be on our way. Okay. Now, it's funny Just because like that. I, I love it. For I do love it. But I, as a salesperson, I'm curious how you – why the theory on – 
See, I understand the theory on 7480 if I've said uh-huh. to you, okay, so this sounds terrific, you know, we based on, you know, what we've just discussed that we've got a $51,000 budget for furniture uh-huh. and I feel totally confident that we're going to be able to pull something together for you in that price range. And if you said to me, then I either say, give me a few minutes to just give you an, to, to calculate what my design fee would be on that, or I will follow this up with a formal proposal, which will include my design fee. Then I see coming back with 7480 because I have taken the time, quote unquote, to think about it. But if I'm going to spit it out right there, I actually thought what you were going to say when you said, don't nail it down, don't anchor it. I thought you were going to say, and based on a $51,000 furniture, budget, my design fees are going to be likely between 7500 and 10000 but I will furnish you with an exact number once I've gone back to my office and blah, blah, blah. See, I feel like if I don't want to say an exact number, I'm going to anchor low to high. And if I am going to say an exact number, I don't know why do I think I can come up with 7480 in five seconds as opposed to just making it a flat fee of 75 making it even and i know you must have a reason because you're skilled and you're talented so i'm curious you have me well, curious it, as a it, salesperson it's just a better it's just a better number to sell than 7500 it just goes back to the selling psychology research but how, how do you how do you think and i know i'm getting in the weeds because this is selling sure. and i love it <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, i'm but, there with you but how do you think that in how what is the what is happening in your mind terry that you think that it's logical that you're going to come up with such a finite number in everything else being loosey goose in other words all of the budget estimate for the furniture was based on rough numbers now all uh-huh. of a sudden the fee is a finite specific 7480 you see? Because we because we made the budget finite, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we agreed to a finite number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We agreed, and so and so it works really nicely. Yeah, quite okay. nicely. Well, now, I'm not. The, I don't challenge thing, you. You've done it. The I know one you've thing not, to you've done it. Yeah, the one thing to wor- watch in this is if getting to fifty one thousand was like pulling teeth. Yes, you need to make your fee inside of the fifty one thousand, and my fee is seventy four eighty, and that'll be inclusive of the fifty one thousand. Oh, okay, but so- you've got to have the room to do that, right? Or if, as you're calling out prices, if people are agreeing instantly, if you say, "Well, six thousand would be good for a sofa," and they go, "Yeah, that's great," right? You're, you're too low. Right, 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 right. You're right, too right, low. Right. 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 So, so you need to pay attention while you're doing this, mm-hmm. and 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 if you get that kind of reaction, you need to start bumping every number that you call out after that. <laughs> Just keep going on keep the best, 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 best plus, best plus, best plus. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep pushing it up because at some point it's going to squeak. Right. She'll squeak. Right. Right. And then you know where the top is because you know um, presenting something that's under what somebody wants is actually worse than than Absol- over. Absolutely, because you know? they think that you're not at their level. Exactly. And you won't get a chance to go fix it. No, no. <laughs> you know, no. Where, whereas if you're under, you can fix it. Right? Right, right. So you want to keep pushing that. So if there's plenty of room in the budget and you keep bumping it up and everything's fine, add your fee on top and it's no big deal. They're fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not it's not that, you know, your fee is, you know, and if it's what it's for, it's like to make sure that it's absolutely beautiful. This is the furniture. This is the white glove service and the design and the beauty and all the all of that stuff going on, right? So, so in those in those conversations, um, it it doesn't it doesn't come up as a problem at all, as long as and this is the key that you say the budget that you're agreed upon exactly right before you say what your fee is. Okay. Because there's a there's a selling psychology piece there in that people pay more attention and put more weight on the first number than the second, and the second number is quite large, and the uh, the first number is quite large, and the second number is not. Right, right, right. Right. right, right so right. you know you're using all those pieces of selling psychology to walk through this. You know the advantage is that if you have a budget, you can design to the budget. You don't do it piece by piece. You do it as a full presentation. You don't go back five times, 10 times, 12 times. That's what happens to designers time. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of presenting in one fell swoop, um, because they're a little bit afraid to actually talk about the fact that the room costs fifty thousand dollars, they'll go back and sell the sofa in a chair and see if she'll buy it and try to go from there. Well, what happens is you end up with 21 trips to the house. You can't possibly bill that much time against the $51,000 room bill. Right. It doesn't make sense. 
So once we have that number, that 7480 number, 7500, whatever it is, divide that by your internal hourly rate. And that's how many hours you have to do the job in. Now you have an hourly, uh, an hour budget. Okay? okay. Instead of just running loose and saying, okay, I'm going to design center and do the, the fabrics for this, right? That should take you, what, two hours? Right. So in, in this way, you book in two hours. If you don't have a plan for that, you'll go to the design center and you'll go to Kravit and pick something out. And then you'll go down the street and, and <laughs> go to Schumacher and do it again. And you'll come home with seven bags of fabric when the very first one was going to be fine in the first place. Right, 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 right. right. So, so a lot of this has to do with having some structure within our business. Um, and it can start just by the way you present jobs and the way you structure your jobs. So you know how much time it is you have in it and how many meetings you're going to have. A $50,000 living room can be done in three or four meetings. If you tell them that's how you're going to do it in the beginning. Well, and that also is a, a good point to be made because the truth of the matter is, is that you can do it in three or four meetings. And if you haven't set it up that this is going to be this long, you know, drawn out flowery process where we're going to have coffee and we're going to shop and we're going to do all this crap. You know what I'm saying? Then the, yeah. the, 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 the client might have this expectation of what it's like to work with you and thinking it's going to be, oh, we're going to get together every week and there's going to be this and that and the other thing. But if you very matter factly explain how you're going to work and that we can do this in three visits and blah, 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 then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is efficient. This is awesome. And it's not yeah. like after the fact, like you hardly did anything. It's like, I did your whole room. Yeah, but you hardly <laughs> spent any time with me. It's like, well, but I did your whole room. <laughs> like it's all done. <laughs> like what's yeah. the difference to you if it took me an hour, it took me 20 hours, right? I yeah. did it. It's nice. Yeah, that is the point. It, the point is the value that you bring to the job, not the number of hours it takes you to do it. Right, 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 right. So the, the point of, of having a fee is to be able to have a set amount of money that you know is coming in at a certain time, and then you control your time behind it. And when you get good at this, as we all do, as we get, as we've been in the business a while, we get faster and faster, um, you can actually end up making far more than you used to. Right. With a fee. The problem with being in the business a long time and getting really good at it and really fast is you're actually charging less than somebody who isn't good. Right. Right. <laughs> so if, you, you know, if you're, you're doing the hourly model, right? Like that exactly. is something that people have said on the show over the years. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I have my, my hashtag baby designers are like, well, how can I charge somebody six hours to do something when I know most of it, I was educating myself on how to do it. And of course there's an answer to that. And yeah. then you have other designers that have said, you know, I'm sort of penalized because I'm efficient. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so exactly. this is an answer to both, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you need to, if you need to learn, then learn on your own time. That's and right. hopefully everybody does that. You know, right. that's, that's part of it. But once you're good and you're fast, you shouldn't be penalized. Right, 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 right. right. And, and make less money because of it. That's, that's ridiculous. But working hourly does that. The other problem with hourly is that it, you're limited to the number of hours you have on the shelf. Right. Right, exactly. You know, of what you can sell. When you're fee based, you can have, you can start leveraging your business and have other people do pieces of that job for you. Okay. There was a, there was a point in my studio the last, you know, the the last five years when we were really cranking that I really just did the opening concepts and got the contract to do it and presented it at the end. And that's all I did. My staff did everything else in the middle. Right. Now, that's not to say that I wasn't on top of it and reviewing everything. I mean, my name's all over it. Sure, so, sure. you know, that's really important. But if you're leveraging this out, there is a way to be able to make to create a revenue of millions of dollars a year. But it's about team and it's about organization and about about having fees and being able to get things done within those fees and still be profitable. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a couple other practical questions about it. So. Sure. For the designer that's hearing in her head, oh, you know, so I've got this list of furniture. I want to just clarify. We are tearing off. Even if we come with, like, my brother's mover's cheat sheet, right? Uh -huh. if, if we might want to make this a little form. It, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Right. It just shows efficiency and sure. thoughtfulness and preparedness, uh -huh. right? So I would Put have no problem. Put your logo on it. Brand yeah, it. exactly, <laughs> right? But the thing is, we are only tearing off the total at the bottom and handing them that because we're not giving them this punch list of everything because I got 
got to believe, Terry, that the next step when you actually get your agreement, you get your design fees agreed, and you have a $50,000 budget for the room, we don't really care when we design the room if we said the sofa was 6000 and the lamp was 100 We're now designing the room for the way it should be, and we're just keeping the total in the 50000 And if that means that a $3,000 sofa serves it better, but we need a spectacular chandelier at 3000 also, we do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is it. Because what's happened, what's happened, and I think even if you give them the list with Sonnet, it, it, I mean, it's a scribble list, um, it, you don't have to match those prices in any way. It's no. just, it's, you're, make, you're getting agreement to the budget. Right. You're getting agreement to concept and budget. Right. And, and right? the thing about it is, is that the agreement to budget is based on your experience, your research for good, better, and best, and of, of ultimately reality. So even if you do need to play the chess game with some really spectacular piece, you know, you know that you can, if you've put X amount for an area rug, you know you can sub that out for a different price point. If you put 8000 you you'll can find one for 3000 because you need uh-huh. the spectacular chandelier. Okay. Yeah, I just Absolutely. want to make sure that we don't get lost in the technicality of, oh, now yeah. I have to back yeah. every item into the, <laughs> the item that we no, say. No, 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 no. The other piece to clarify in there is you need to use retail numbers, big numbers, okay. that give yourself plenty of room. Right. Um, people ask me, well, is that at wholesale? No. Okay, or what we buy it? No. Or do I have to figure out my 30% on everything? No. Make it retail. Make the number big. Right. So even though we might have our good, better, best sourced from trade, when we have it on our cheat sheet, it's the retail price of the good, better, best. It's not the net price that we're getting from the, the dealer. Exactly. Love exactly. It. I love Very it. Very important. Very okay. important because you got to give yourself some space. Exactly. Okay? And then to take this further into the weeds here, you mentioned that you know you could easily come up with a design fee mentally basing it on 15 percent do you Uh recommend that as your expertise and your you know your 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 business grows and you grow in confidence and so forth do you have do you recommend that you push that number higher or Tara is that like Lou this is where we do it it's 15 percent how do you how do you do that no, you can't. Once you get good at this, it's easy to sell 15% of a budget as a design fee. Piece of cake. So that's right? like entry level. You're a little nervous. Entry you're level. a little afraid. Mm-hmm. You don't have a lot of experience. You're, and here's the thing. All of those things can be true about a designer, and they can still go higher. But what you're saying is – I know from teaching interior designers that the least experienced of you can get 15%. That's yes, what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And as you get better at this and more comfortable with this, yes, you move up to 20, 22, something like that. Is there a top number that you would say, I'm sorry, you shouldn't be charging 40% of the furniture budget? Like, is that, well, and is there anything crazy or is just the sky's the limit, whatever your expertise and your confidence gets? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I would, I would go to 2025 20, and keep it in there okay. because the, because then you could start building on the product side. Okay. 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 So it's, I want a couple things about that. A is to use retails. B, you need a, a couple stocking dealer relationships along okay. the way. Okay. Where you've got some really nice margins because when you talk about pricing, if you say that you sell product at retail or less, people are really happy. And if you say you sell your product at cost plus 25, mm-hmm. they're all over you. Right. Now, now retail less 10 or 20 is way more money to you than cost plus 25. Mm-hmm. And they are capable of doing the math, but, but it's the word plus right. that gets them. Every time you say that, they think it's expensive, even though it's not. And they think they're getting gouged. And then you get this whole big discussion. If you say retail or less, they get it. Okay. And so what we're saying, two things I want to go in there. So the first thing I want to say in there is even though we might be at a 15 or a 20% figure for our design fee, we not, uh-huh. we're not forgetting that we're making money on this $51,000 budget. In Absolutely. There. Okay. So Absolutely. that's number one. And number mm-hmm. two is this is another big conundrum and talking point with a lot of uh, designers, as I know mm-hmm. you know, is – I love this. You're, you say you'll get product at retail or less. Tell mm-hmm. us, you know, 
there's two people out of 10 that are going to stop a designer right there. There's eight uh-huh. people that'll say, oh, okay, or less. But there's uh-huh. two people out there that'll say, what do you mean? Why wouldn't I get it less on everything? So tell, talk us a little bit about those tougher conversations. So it's yeah. not the people that okay. are easy. It's the people that are sticklers. Uh-huh. Or, or it's the, or the question, when is it less? Right, right. Like how <laughs> do we decide? That's, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Well, as soon as yeah. you say retail well, or less, I'm like, well, I want it less all it less? the time. <laughs> when is it less? Well, right. some things I buy really well. I have really good stocking dealer relationships. And when I have those, I'm going to pass them on to you oh, and okay. share that with you. Okay. But some things we're going to buy are very special, one of a kind pieces through showrooms. And I don't get much of a discount at all. So you know, I, I can't extend that on those. Okay. So, and you know, the whole thing about it is, is you just need the answer. You see? Yes. Because and confidence. Right. You need the answer. It has to make sense. And you say it like this is the Bible. I just said it to you. Don't question me. And here's what I know to be true is if you say it 10 times and seven people go, oh, retail or less, and they just go along their way, three uh-huh. people are going to be like, well, when do I get it less? When uh-huh. you say it like that, two of those people will be like, okay, I get it. One person is still going to push you back because that's just the uh-huh. way the world goes, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And But that's yeah. when you, you you're answer must be based in truth and confidence because with that one person you just say that's how I run my business exactly right that's how it yeah yeah Yeah. you know and if you can if you can set up rules for your business like you were working for somebody else like you had a boss you wouldn't have any trouble saying that at all right right that's what they told me to say so that's what I have to say and that's the end of it right well so we have to do the same thing for ourselves be our own boss and create these rules and then act as if you know, we're working for somebody else. That's how I do it. Well, and you know how I describe that here on the show? Uh, I, I describe that as know what you will do and what you will not do before you but, enter any conversation, negotiation, proposal. If I know what I will do and what I won't do, there's if that one person is going to push me back and I'm going to say, look, that's the that's my business model. This is how it works. If that person's uh-huh. like, well, I don't really, you know, I don't think that's fair. I should get a discount on everything. If I've decided, just like you said, that this is the line my boss told me to do, to say, then uh-huh. I can say, then we don't have to do business together. You know, that yeah. one out of 10 can go by the wayside because you know in that situation, if somebody keeps pushing you to that level they're going to push you on everything and this is going to be brutal yeah it's not going to get better (laughs) it's not going to get better you know because when you say to somebody this is how we run our business and they want you to do it differently it's just like what are you doing like Uh -uh. you don't go into a a restaurant and tell them how you're going to pay them like Uh yeah yeah or or go to nordstrom's and say hey this is a great dress but i'm not paying 300 dollars for it i want it for 100 exactly yeah that's not gonna happen what did you pay for this dress nordstrom's i want to pay what you paid (laughs) yeah i want to pay 60 dollars you know or or i want you to like you know take Take 16 inches off the bottom, ship it to, you know, Peru and back and no charge. Okay, why not? Yeah. Why don't I just yeah. do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the truth. Stay in the life. Stay that's the it. Life. That's it. But there, there is that. Go. The thing, what, what we both know, and both of us in business more than 30 years, right, mm-hmm. is that it's, to me, it's the listening of the way seasoned people have done it, taking the notes on it, taking the notes on these little nuances of the conversation. You know, I, I can hear that you're a, a student of sales. It's the same thing. It's it's how to say it. It's when to say it. The high number first, the low number second, right? It's yeah. all of that stuff. And the more you do it, so in the beginning, it's, it's confusing and it's overwhelming. But in the beginning, you just have to trust that, Somebody has done it successfully, even though it feels crazy. And then the Uh more you do it, the more you're like, this works. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Once you have it just work once or twice, it's like, oh, I got this. I got it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's, fun. it's fun. I love it. I love it. And yeah. so so the thing is, now I'm going to, you know, take advantage of your, your brilliance here and take it a step further. So what do you do? What do you suggest? Does a designer at that point collect whenever there's agreement, final agreement on design fee, however we get there and, and the budget fee? Do you suggest they collect their design fee in full and they get how do what's your, what's your what do you teach your philosophy on that stuff? 
Well, my opinion is if it's less than 5000 or so, just take a check for the whole thing. Right. I mean, generally for our clients, writing a check is kind of a pain in the butt. And, and, by say, and in saying that, you really need to be taking credit cards too because yes. it just makes the money move faster. Yeah. It's a, a, it, it, get, over, get over the cost of it. <laughs> Put it in your pricing. You know, it's, it's a cost of doing business. It'll right. make the money move. It makes everything work better. Right. Right. At does. any rate. I yeah. would rather have the money in hand than worry about the 2.2%. I mean, it's just, let's just do it, you know? Precisely, right. So if it's little, get the whole thing. If it's ten grand, maybe you want half of it up front. The other half, you want to make sure it gets paid about two-thirds of the way through, like on your third appointment, because your fourth appointment's when you're going to order furniture, okay. and you don't want that money due on the same day. They need to come up with $50,000. <laughs> OK, so and if you wait till after you get that order, they're not so anxious to pay you and you'll right. wait a while. Right. 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 So get get your money up front. It's not the onus on, is not on you to prove that you're going to do the job. The onus is on them to prove they're going to pay you. Ah. Uh. Just say that one more time, please. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the onus is not on you to prove that you're going to get the job done. The onus is on them to prove that they're going to pay you. <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's, when you it's go to the doctor, it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, you go to the doctor, you pay them first before you ever go in. You don't, you don't get the diagnosis and say, Oh, you know what? I don't like that. I'm not going to pay you. Right. And by the way, if he says, I don't know what's wrong with you, you still paid him. You still pay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Jeez, exactly. I'm stumped. I have no idea why you have purple and blue spots all over your body. You've never seen it <laughs> yeah, before. $2,000. Thanks. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So the same with product. You know, you can't take 50% down on product and only have, you know, a 30% margin or you're in the hole. Right. You can't do that. Right. You're financially unstable. You're putting your family at risk, right. quite frankly. Right, right, right. right. It's irresponsible right? So, of you to yourself and your business. Yes. That's right. That's right. So, you know, that, those should be paid in full up front. They pay it in full up front on the internet all the time. I know. That's what people, that, they, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, what else do you, you know, and the thing is, that's the one place that internet shopping has helped us, honestly. Yes. Because people yes. are like, oh, yeah, I do. I pay, if I wanted to order $4,000 from Amazon, they're not like, hey, inspect it. $4,000 on your car. Yeah, they're yeah. not like, inspect it and let us know what you think. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not the game. No, yeah. no, no. So no, you no. Got, you've got to play that, too, because, you know, you're not the bank. Right. We're not the bank of design here. And those people have way more money than we do. So, right. you know, don't let that happen. Right. So I love this little sure. tip in there that if your process is like a four-step process and by the third step, you, you know, you're doing presenting your design proposal in completion, right? The whole everything. Right. You uh -huh. want paid there for design fees because the next meeting you're getting a big check. So exactly. we don't want to be like, purchasing. right. We don't want to be like 50,000 for that. And another 2000 you owe me on design fees. It's like uh -huh. one has been taken care of. We move to the next level. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And it's also exactly. like a deliverable, right? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to deliver you the actual final list of all the furniture as opposed to the idea of the furniture, you've got to pay me for that. That's what the design right. fee is a contract for, for that specific sofa, because I told you back in our first meeting that you needed a sofa, but that yeah. doesn't, you don't have to pay for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. And that right. brings up a question. Tara, are you an advocate of paying for the first consultation or not paying for the first con charging? I should say charging for the co first con or not charging for the first consult. Absolutely a charge for a first appointment unless it's a job interview. Now, the difference between the two is a first appointment that came out of house or your website or from somewhere you don't know. Absolutely, you're going to charge for that first appointment. Um, if it's a referral from your best client or your favorite architect or the contractor you work with all the time, that's a job interview. And you're going to go in and just interview for the job. Um, the, the difference is the paid first appointment, you're actually going to go to someone you don't know and actually talk design and give them ideas and flow with it. Give them good value and charge them and charge them four or five hundred dollars. OK, it's not one hour of time. It's a one off and you had to drive there and drive back. 
And what you can do is, and we've had really good success with this in our programs, is that that you could just let the client know that should they decide to continue on the job with you, that you will credit this $500 back into their, their letter of agreement, which is fine because you just figure it in and then take it out. And it's all work you would have done anyway. So, you know, you can give the client plenty of, of value because you're being paid, you know, and, and the cool thing about it is you get to figure out if they're, they're real or not. You will know at the end of an hour whether you're going to write a letter of agreement or you're going to send them to Calico Corners and go do their thing, <laughs> right? Right. So let's clarify. I, I, you're, you're saying unless it's a job interview, right? You're, <laughs> you're using that language, but you don't really mean a job interview. You mean that uh, like – because we have to get very, very – clear here. So uh-huh. you're, you've done a project for a, a, a client and now a person calls and says, oh, you did Sally Smith, my cl- my friend's best friend's house. In your mm-hmm. mind, that's not a stranger consult. So in your mind, that's a job interview. You're still going to the Sally Smith's house. You're doing all the things you do in a consult, but you're feeling like, like, tell us the nuance in there, the uh, difference. Yeah. Good, 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 good question. I would say that if Sally Smith showed up and said, "Hey, I'm, I'm, we're building a new house. We have an architect. We have a builder. I need a designer." That's a job interview. Okay. If Sally Smith kind of says, "You know, you did my friend's living room, and I would like you to take a look at my master bedroom. I think I need to fluff it up a little." All right, that's a paid appointment. Okay, okay, I okay. Very interesting. I like it. Okay, and that's a great clarification there because we do sort of sometimes can get. How about that for English? We do sort of sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the things that I say sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do sometimes get stuck in absolutes. And so there exactly. is always room for, yes, be an advocate of charging for your consult every time you do it. But there's a place and a time where even you will think, should I be charging for this? And that's a great experience, uh, a great uh, analogy of where it would just feel weird. Like if a builder calls you or a co- client calls you and says, I'm, they're not, th- that's the truth. They're, yeah. You're not going to charge them $500 for that. And so you don't feel no. funny about it. But you probably knew that already, right? And, but now we're saying it out loud, the difference. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And it's about being conscious. It's about really thinking about what's what's going on, mm-hmm. right? And not just, not just being an autopilot. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is, Terry, I'll share with you, you know, uh, Sandra Funk was on the show recently. She is the principal of House of Funk, very, very successful designer here in New York, New Jersey area. Mm-hmm. And she's been a designer for 20 years, has had her own firm for 15. And she has done it every which way. She has mm-hmm. done hourly. She's done this. She's done that and she's finally now very very confident in her process and the way she does it and it don't matter if you like it or you don't like it because it works for her and she's got it nailed down with an absolute precise system and Uh she just recently told us that she no longer charges for the initial consult and I'm going to explain to you her logic on it but if I told you the mail I got on that one (laughs) and I'm just like people I'm just sharing the information here. <laughs> yeah. And so, but what cool. Sand- Tell me. <laughs> so what Sandra described is that, and you, you, you know, be good if anyone listening hasn't heard the episode because don't take my word verbatim on what it was. But the understanding yeah. that I got from her is that basically, to use your language, everyone is a job interview, but she's really interviewing them and so what she's and of course we all know that we're always interviewing our clients just like they're interviewing us and that we want to you know avoid the red flags but Mm -hmm. she has come to a spot in her business terror that she just feels and first of all she's dealing with luxury high end and of course where we live here in new jersey it's a lot of hedge fund people and traders and that kind of a thing so it's a very shark infested area right like it's very Mm -hmm. high negotiation high stakes high pressure you know it's not just you know whatever right and so Mm -hmm. she feels going into this environment by not charging 
She's not going and she's not telling you you should have, you know, a six foot area rug. She's not giving you information. But at the end, if she doesn't want the project, she doesn't feel like she has. She's just like, okay, we're not a fit. Like, and that's not the word she uses. We've decided not to take the project at this time. You know, thank you so Mm -hmm. much for considering us. But I, I'm telling you, I got pushback like crazy, as if it was my business principle and it was my <laughs> thing. I'm like, okay, you know what I'm saying? We're just sharing what works for her. And there's no debating that it works for her, whether anyone agrees or doesn't agree, right? So, right. but um, the thing is, have you come across designers or you, in your experience, where that's a model that you're familiar with that you can say, look, what works for her works for her? Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But it happens in the very high end area yeah. okay people in our master's program we often have that oh. and if it's working for them and their clients are at that level then heavens no we're not going to charge them five hundred dollars for a first appointment right. never in a million years but if you're if you've got you know if your clientele is not that very top at the top of the top okay and you're getting a mix of people you need to protect yourself right. because you're going to do a lot of looky-loo appointments with people who don't have any clue what's going on mm-hmm and it's right. interesting because she did describe that she does um, she does vetting on it. So mm-hmm. they will Google the address and, and Google view my house and Google mm-hmm. the property value and all of that other stuff. And so that she mm-hmm. knows that she, you know, she's going to the best of her a bit, able to sleuth a p- viable, potential, truly you know, potential client that likely has the budget, right? To do it. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. And so, but, and also, you know, to be very clear, we didn't talk a lot about this aspect of it on the show, but she said it, you know, there are situations where it's a one-off consult. You know what I mean? She just Uh has decided for the most part, that's not part of her business model anymore. But if somebody, if her previous client that she's worked for said, I just want you to come and do stand in my living room and move the furniture in circles, then she would charge you for that. That's working on the yes. job, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Like and the that- other piece of that for everybody is that same amount that you would charge for that first appointment. That needs to be the minimum to show up at somebody's house right. and move the furniture around exactly. or reupholster the vanity seat in her master bath. Exactly. exactly. Because we get caught in those a lot too. Right, 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 right. Right? So- I mean, we want to take care of our past clients, but at the same time, you can't do these things that, that cause your business to go backwards. Right, 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 exactly. And so do you find that with your master's designers that so – because that, that, I didn't really break it down with Sandra. So if, like, say, we did a $200,000 renovation and, you know, $200,000 project for a client, we know uh-huh. they have the money, they know they have the resources, but they turn around and they say, oh, you know, could we just redo the headboard and the drapes in my, you know, 12-year-old daughter's room? So – you have a master's client that's like, huh, uh-huh. you know, what would, would you say? Yes, go and charge 500 for that consult and then blah, 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 right? Or charge whatever for that consult, right? Is that a place? Yeah. That- well, yes. Yeah. So you would say, well, if you're in the middle of the job, if you're in the middle of the $200,000 job, no, just I'm do saying it and throw two- it in there. No, but I'm saying it's afterwards. over. Yeah, like it's, it's six months, it's a year later. Yeah. And, you know, because I think in that area, Even though that client, when you first met them, there wasn't the fee for the consult. That's Uh different. There's the client understands. I'm paying you to come and tell me what kind of headboard and what kind of drapes to do. There's going to be a fee for your time. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. It's not like I'm come. We're having a conversation about. I wonder if I should do this two hundred thousand dollar project with you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah there's nuances situation. there. Yeah. There's nuances yeah. there. And Absolutely. that's the whole point. There are no hard and fast rules. And a lot of it comes from experience and being burnt in a certain way. Yeah, it does. It right? does. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. With, with lesser experience, if you said, oh, well, I didn't charge him for the consult when we did the 200000 How do I not charge him for the consult for this? That's just not thinking it through. But that is yeah. what happened when we were lesser experienced. We don't well, it make a shift <laughs> and say, this is. isn't the same thing. Mm -hmm. It isn't the same thing. Yeah. And just because you did it one way before doesn't mean you should do it the same. We have the same conversation about raising your rates. I mean, you you know, your internal hourly rate, I'm going to say internal because you don't want to do a lot of hourly just because it's, you know, a pain in the butt. Um, But it, it should consistently move up. 
and say, well, how can I charge her more than, you know, she's my past client and I didn't charge her. I was at $80 an hour then. And it's like, well, you don't go to the store and expect the milk to be the same price it was a year ago. <laughs> you know, you got to catch you. I'm sorry. I'm not paying $4 for this. I want it for $2.99. Right. It's like, that's not realistic. Right? I know. And, Isn't and- it so crazy that that... That is a legitimate concern that designers have. But Uh we, in our everyday life, pay more when we show up at the same places one and two and five and ten years later. Yes, for the same thing. Right. We pay more. Right. Yes. Right. And it really is. We've said it a billion times on the show. It's the confidence in your voice when you say it. If you're like, do I have permission to charge you more? (laughs) (laughs) Can I charge you more? Do I have to? Yeah. Right. Because you can say the words, my new hourly rate is 175. And Mm -hmm. you can say it with, those are the exact same words, but it can be heard as, I'm all the way up to 175 now. Will you pay it? Or I've raised my rates and, you know, with my experience and the the economy and everything else. (laughs) And the economy like, Last year for 175. I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah. Yes. And yes, that's yes, it. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. we don't raise them in the middle of a project, right? Ever. And, never. Right. Ever. Ever. <laughs> never. Ever. Right. There are certain <laughs> things that are just common sense. We hope, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, there are some rules in there. Right. And now, then, now we yeah. we could expand this this whole piece about about fees. You know, as, as 15 percent on a furniture job on construction and remodeling. There's another one. OK, ah. and that can be more like that's more like 10, 12, 13 percent somewhere in there. But you have to arrive at a budget in order to do it. OK, right. so the way that that you get to that is to do an exploratory letter of agreement where for a smaller amount, you're going to go in and do a concept, do some rough plans that you could put a contractor through to pull the labor, and you run all the finishes, run all the pricing on the finishes, and then sit down with them on the third meeting and go through all the numbers and decide what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Now, this is really important because when people bring you in for a remodel, they want to redo the kitchen and this bathroom and let's do the floors. And by the way, we'd like to do the windows too. And, uh, you know, you know that the the laundry list is, is probably $400,000. And the question mark is, are they really going to spend that much? You know, mm-hmm. or is this really a $200,000 job? And they don't know, you know, they've been watching HGTV and, you know, they <laughs> think they can, you know, you know that game. You know, so in an exploratory letter of agreement, you get to take it paid for a little bit of time to figure these pieces out and then have what what we liked. We always called it the come to Jesus meeting is, all right, here's <laughs> what all this stuff is likely to cost. What makes the most sense? Where's the bang for the buck? Do you want all of it? You want some of it? OK, and then when you have that, when when the laundry list gets defined, so you actually have a scope, then you can call out a fee. Okay, based on that, and and often those fees are quite large. I mean, that's where those forty, sixty, eighty, ninety thousand dollar fees come from. Are these big remodels where you've got the whole planning, you've got um, all the finishes, we've got construction supervision and and observation, and you've got furniture and interior design pieces in there can easily add up to that much. Mm. Which is really nice because then you've got a year and a half project, and you know when you're going to be paid, and you know how much time it's going to take. And, you're in. Right. And are there general rules of thumb that you have found are successful as far as the fee range for that exploratory uh, letter of agreement? That one is best to just figure out on the hours. Occasionally, you just have to block out the path you're going to take and how many hours you're going to predict it's going to do. So you don't want, I often sit down with somebody and to do one of these for the first time and they say well I, we th- I think it's going to be 22 hours and then we start we go through the first meeting what are you going to do and then what do you have to do and you got to do this and then the second meeting we bring the contractors in and then you got to do all the pricing and okay and then we end up with something more like 30 hours mm. <laughs> right yeah it's always so, less so, they yeah, I always, always think it's less they always yeah I, yeah, I agree. yeah. I so don't skip the step <laughs> of actually deconstructing it and walking through everything that you have to do Okay. I, that's what I see happening, you know, to, oh, well, I think, I think, you know, I think 2000 will take care of it. Well, no, it's probably more like 4,500, something like that. Okay. Um, by the time you get through it all. So that, that you can figure out on hours. We do something called project time estimating, which is a, 
uh, an Excel sheet that's built to do that on this, that makes it a little bit easier. But, it, you know, you just block out the hours for that because what that does then is walk you into a really nice big fat job. Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, because often we get caught in somebody starts with remodeling and we, we call out what we're going to do and get into it. And then it grows into something way larger. And then and then somebody's calling me, well, what do I do about my fee now? Yes. <laughs> you know, well, it wasn't based on the scope that was there. And if you were clear with the scope that was there in your letter of agreement and it gets added on to, then you can write another letter of agreement. Right. You just and keep adding. How is this how is this presented to the client because on one hand it's completely logical if it is new construction how are how it's not like we can say hey two sofas 12 grand two lamps 4000 mm -hmm. <laughs> right and so uh -huh. i understand that the details have got to be addressed at a, a a deeper level in order to come up with the budget and so therefore mm -hmm. it is reasonable that you would ask for 4 or 5 or 6000 dollars to to come up with this but for the client who is like wait a minute I'm just going to I'm going to pay you $5,000 for you to tell me what this should cost and I might not want to hire you. Do you say that and if we go forward this will have become part of the design process and will be um, applied to design fees even if you Absolutely. You know, okay, so Absolutely. that makes sense to me. Okay. Because it it's work that needs to get done and I yeah. mean even if you don't end up hiring me, you're way way far ahead. Right, right. You, and you'll you give them that work product. you got a concept, you got numbers, yeah. You'll give yeah. them that work product. If they ultimately exactly. say, you know, we're not going to go ahead with you, the builder referred his mother and she's just amazing. But here's <laughs> the work product here's... and I give you 4500 for it and you give me the work product. Exactly. Here's the deliverables. Yep. Okay. There you okay. go. Okay. I there like that. I can see that because as a consumer, <laughs> I need that anyway. And yes. so why, what's the difference if I pay, you know, Susie or Sally to do it? I would love it that if I keep going with the same person – but I do need that anyway because even to have start to have the conversations with my builder. What kind exactly. of kitchen are we designing here? What kind exactly. of cabinets? Where are we sourcing them? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, because from there you can jump into it and say, okay, now let's interview three contractors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, see who we want to do this. Right. right. So it's like, you know, my friend Nancy Gansakover calls it her lat that, you know, you have to have your ladder of services. She's also a business coach for designers, Terry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's literally like that could be a ladder of service. That could be, you know, you know, others are calling it a package. You know, I have a package or I have a ladder of service that is I do the preliminary budget for your new construction. It's this amount of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, exactly. and, and what would we do if we were really going to try and get clear on it? Obviously, we have to base it on our, our, our data and everything else. But for an experienced seasoned designer, would you say you're safe and basing it on up to a 5,000 square foot house, it's $4,000 or up to a 10,000 square foot house, it's 6,000. Or is that silly? Am I getting in the weeds? Yeah, you're in the weeds there. Yeah, cause, <laughs> because, yeah, you, you, who knows what it would turn into. You know, you but really I mean need for to that preliminary and, LOA. I well, mean even the, in the preliminary, okay. it's like, it's like some, some things are fairly simple to figure out and others have, you know, could be 5,000 square feet, but there's, you know, a million pieces in there. So you got okay. something in every single room. Okay. So that, you've that got to, you've got to have some chops to figure out what that's yeah. like you said, how many hours are you going to take to put together this mm -hmm. exploratory uh, letter of agreement, this exploratory Ex budget? Thing. Right, okay. right. Yeah. How much how much drawing time is going to take? How much time with the contractor? How much time just building a big Excel sheet that's going to have all these numbers on it? Right, 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 right. Because one 5,000 square foot house could have five bathrooms and another one could have three and bathrooms yeah. are probably more labor intensive to figure out and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's where your, your expertise as a designer, you know, it's that, that's, you know, my, my gap, my, you know, my personal gap, not doing the design. I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's not really yeah. the same no matter what size the house is. Exactly. Yeah. And in that, in my experience, I've got a contracting license too. So I did all of that side as well. So I got a really good base in how that actually works and, and how you have to get to real numbers. And that was always my thing in my studio is we, we ran on real numbers because contractors believe that, that the lowest price will get the bid and then everything's an upcharge. Mm. 
which makes all of us crazy because we know that there's no such thing as a hundred dollar light fixture. I mean, even at Home Depot, it doesn't exist, right? So, it, I mean, it's not a true price, and and I think it's more important for our level of client to get the level of finishes that they really want in there and say, this is what what you want actually costs. Right. 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 Yeah, that is when you build and you go based on the contractors you know, allowables, right? For each certain right. thing. It, there are huge aha moments when you are uneducated and you don't know. And if you don't have a designer guiding you through the process, I remember when we built our home back in the late nineties and, um, you know, I just, one of the big aha moments was when the, the builder says to me, cause I didn't use a designer. Right. And the uh -huh. builder says to me, okay, so you have to meet the electrician there on Tuesday at two o'clock and you're going to walk through and tell him where you want hi hats and you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. You and so, what? right. Right. And so not only was that <laughs> challenging, cause I was like, well, I don't even know where the furniture is going. So where do I want a hi hat? So, okay. Every corner, right. Like duh. Right. right. Like, I mean, just so <laughs> silly how uneducated I was, but the, 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 the real education came when, I get the change order from the builder like two days later uh -huh. and he's like, you know, X amount of thousands of dollars for electrical add on. And I'm like, I said, to, I called up. I'm like, what is this about? And he said, Oh, well, this is for all the um, hi hats. I'm like, but hi hats are included. He's like, Eight hi hats for the entire house are included. I'm like, what? I'm like, and it's did, a five thousand square foot home. Like, oh. how is that possible? And he's like, yeah, anything you want over that is extra. I was like, oh my Cute. goodness. Yeah. yeah, that's where you yeah. just are unawares, and it's stories like that that designers really can use to help their client understand that they can save them heartache in five different conversations like that in a process. Exactly. You know, exactly. you've yeah. been through it, and you know that eight. Like when I signed the contract for that house, the many, you know, months before that, I'm sure somewhere it said eight hi hats. What do I know? I wasn't looking. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't compute to anything. No. It wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. No, yeah. no. And then all of a sudden I'm like, there's eight just in the living room and the family room. Like, what are we exactly. doing here? Exactly. So, so that's why people come to us as designers because mm -hmm. we know that's game. We yes. know, we know what the reality is. Yes. Yes. Right. This and we can, bare we can, bones, you know, build, mm -hmm. you, you're, you don't want a bare bones build sweetie <laughs> that's not what you're that's not what you're asking for exactly. so that's one of the reasons those exploratories work really well mm -hmm. is that you get that number from the contractor and then you put in everything that they want yes 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 okay yes, and yes. then let, okay so let's talk about what this is because one of the things that happens to people designers over and over again is they get through this and then the contract because of the overages all the furniture money gets eaten up by the contractor yes. in the cost overages mm -hmm. and, and the, the people don't end up with what they want right and the thing is at the beginning process you can guide your client to make changes so Luann, do you really need 48 hi-hats like is that really necessary will you give up 20 of those in order to have kitchen you know your cabinet grade this way right yeah it's like exactly. it's before the conversation not in the middle when i'm getting a change order when i've already got my own personal budget put aside for this house right uh, exactly and yeah. you spent your afternoon over there trying to figure it out already right exactly yeah. exactly yeah. so yeah. so these are great points for designers to recall when they're um, in the consultation and the pitch for working with a, a, a with a homeowner on their build house, why they need the designer in that process, right? Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's funny because I've recently become good friends with Brad Leavitt, who is, he has a podcast called, called AFT Construction, and you may uh -huh. know him. He is in the Arizona area. He's a luxury builder in the Arizona area. Oh, yeah? I wonder, yeah. oh, that's funny that you don't know him, Terry. You should know no, him. No. Yeah. yeah. And um, I was on his show and we hit it off and I immediately invited him to my show. So his show recently aired and I just love him so much because he loves designers so much that I'm going to do recurring episodes with him. And he has a hard, fast rule. He will not build a house for you if you have not hired an interior designer. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Right. How about that? Yes. That's he's, great. it's like a hard, fast rule and he's come to it, you know, through trial and pain and error. And finally, uh -huh. it's just that what we said, know what you will do and what you will not do. And uh -huh. so he knows that he saves time and money. He knows the client, the homeowner will save time and money with the designer running point between the architect, the builder and the client. 
Yeah, it's true. Yes, it is, right? Isn't it awesome? So there are lovely builders out there that get it. (laughs) (laughs) There are some guys that get it, yes. Yeah, so you'll have to look him up because he's in Arizona with you. I'll track him down. Yes. Yeah, so, do. Well, I have to tell you, Terry, you're amazing. I really appreciate all your perspective today. I'm sure this is going to be one of those episodes where you're going to get people reaching out to you and asking you questions and everything else. Tell people, tell the designers, Terry, how they reach you and what kinds of services you offer for them. Surely. Uh, we have a company called Interior Design Business Academy. We started 10 years ago, so we've got quite a bit of depth. We have a, uh, an online curriculum and a lot of one-on-one help, weekly coaching, all of kinds of pieces like that. We have a growth program that works with designers who are just starting out or need to rework an older business that's all about getting clients and making money. Um, and just getting that wheel to turn. The second level is called structure, and that's about building the back room. That's about building team and setting up your systems and essentially getting your life back and keeping the income at the same time. Mm. And we have a master's program for those who are stepping into something extraordinary. Um, And That's a, a very small mastermind group that I work very closely with. So all of those pieces are really fun, as well as Modern Designer's Guide, which is our entry level program. Um, and which you could find on my website, which is interiordesignbusinessacademy.com. Um, and I hope you'll take a look at that and check it all out. And if you have questions for me or want to want to get something clarified or something like that, you can email me at terry at interiordesignbusinessacademy.com and give me a couple of days, but I will make sure I answer you. Awesome. And it's Terry with an I, right? Terry with an I. Right. Yep. All right. Well, you might be a little scary. You just gave out your email. Get ready. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> no, we have an awesome group of, uh, a, a, a group, multiple thousands of interior designers that listen to the show, but it's an awesome, engaged group, Terry. And, um, you know, Fabulous. yeah, it really is a heck of a community that we have here. And particularly when a guest like yourself shares such excellent information um they i do i encourage them i'll sometimes get what do you think terry would say about this i'm like go find out go ask her you know what i mean like she comes on the show she's happy to help so yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely awesome. well, yeah thank I've, you. I've, you're welcome yeah. you're welcome yeah. i i really enjoy my my position of, of supporting designers and bringing this industry up to where we need to be and and getting us all paid what we're worth amen to that terry amen to that thank you thank you You are welcome, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So um, possibly if you're a seasoned designer, one of my hashtag seasoned designers, then maybe you already have some sort of process for this, right? But even if you are a seasoned designer and you don't, I'm sure that there's quite a few people doing a happy dance right now, okay? This is a tough conversation on budget. And I think that this process that Terry has is really, really fantastic for getting this elephant out into the middle of the room. And what I love is that anytime someone can take something complicated and break it down, into an understandable, doable process and one that makes sense and one that I can visualize implementing, yes, all day long, I'm loving this. So yay. And I want to tell you, go grab a pen and paper because in a moment, I'm going to repeat some of the ideas that most stood out to me from this conversation with Terry today. She had a lot of great points and I'm going to recap them for you. And I want to say to you, someone else who is a standout to me is our sponsor, Kravit. Kravit is always at the forefront in helping you operate and manage your interior design firm. And they're always at the forefront of innovation too. Have you heard about Kravit I Create yet? With Kravit I Create, they are making it easier than ever for you to customize furniture. That's right. This exciting program allows you to easily design your own furniture in a few simple steps. You can create your own chests, tables, ottomans, benches, beds, all in just a few clicks. See it for yourself. Go to Kravit.com today and give it a try. That's Kravit.com. Okay, so 
Let's recap some of the highlights in Terry's jam-packed episode today with tons of advice. The first one is people will say they don't know their budget, and it's usually because they don't, and that's typically because they haven't thought about it. This is what Terry said, right? And I believe her on that. I think it's true. But she's also so right on with her next point, that people do typically know what they think things cost, right? That's how she described it. They know what they think they should or would spend on certain items. And so that's a great distinction because I think if you think of yourself as a consumer, you can pretty much say that that's a right on, um, you know, observation. All right. The next thing that I love is that you probably already have an Excel spreadsheet of all the items found in a particular room, broken out by room. I've heard many designers over the years tell me that they have this. And so Terry's idea here is have a version of this on hand during the consult. It's genius, and it's really simple to put into action. Think about the efficiency of this, not only of being able to, as she said, build a budget in real time, but now you actually have a pretty solid list to get started designing from, right? I mean, I love that part. Another thing is is that we have her strategy for summarizing in the moment and repeating back to the client the agreed budget which was calculated from your list, and then stating the design fee after saying the budget. High number first, low number second. Great sales advice. Big message is, though, don't forget the design fee, okay? So if you're newer or less experienced, you might shy away from saying this because you might think, oh, you know, maybe that, you know, the big budget number is too expensive. I shouldn't do it here. Or you might not actually realize that your consumer needs to consider this as part of the budget. We just had that on a recent What Would Lou Do show where a designer um, wrote into me to say, you know, why did my client get mad at me? They said they had a certain budget and I hit the budget and really it was because she hit the budget with the items in the room, but her design fee put the budget over by something like 25%. And so that's a big thing to really, and if you're not sure the nuance on that, go back and hit up that What Would Lou Do show. The next thing that Terry taught us is, I love this. This is two sides of the same tip, right? One side when you are floating your good, better, best budget for the individual pieces, that she said, if every piece you float for them is too high, especially if you're using your goods and betters, then this is probably not a viable client for you. This is probably not someone who will end up even hiring a designer. They are realistically not prepared for the costs attached, okay? And so that's good advice to think about there. And then on the other side of the same tip of hers is that if they are easily agreeing to every price that you float, especially if you're floating a lot of best range, you've got to start going higher, okay? They are a great prospect and you don't want them to think that you're not qualified to work with them, which they will start to think if every price you say is lower than what they're already accustomed to paying for it. Great, great tip. Okay. Next one is don't don't miss this one. This is one of the most important steps that Terry mentioned, that once you have an agreement, you have agreed on budget and design fee, and you have collected it, either full or deposit, go back now and divide your hourly rate into the design fee that you settled on and plan your project out, okay? So just because you're charging a flat fee, you still have to plan your hours. You still have to know how much time each part of the project you have to complete it, okay? So that the flat fee you charged is profitable. You can see how crucial this step is, right? You can't get lost in the weeds in the different sections and tasks of your project because we all know there'll be a certain number of external things that cost you time, whether it's revisions or back orders or communication breakdowns. But my goodness, you can control your own efficiency and you must control it, right? She used that example of searching for the perfect fabric for hours on end when you know you found a fabric, before that, was that was perfectly fine. So don't blow your own money is basically what Terry's saying. Don't run through your own money, all right? Final thought here. Terry mentioned as you gain experience, meaning 
as you have perfected your back end processes, your efficiency, as well as this budget and sales presentation. She said, in order to start making more money, you will often, rather than raise your design fee above 20 to 25 percent, she said, you will want to start striving to earn more money on the furniture items that you sell, right? Where she wants you to move more to a model where you buy more and more of everything that you sell at a better margin, okay? So this cannot be overlooked. It is part of the business that when you learn it, you can add significant dollars to your earnings. So great, great final tip there, all right? Uh, Fabulous show. My thanks to Terry for all of her plain sense advice today. I hope it helped you. I hope it inspired you to up your game, and I hope it gave you some courage and language for having the tricky conversation about budget with your next client. I'm going to just get a little bit ahead of myself here and spill the beans on a new course that we're coming out with later this summer. As you know, Sour Brennan has been teaching Process Leads to Profits for me, and it's been wildly successful. We just finished up recently our sixth and final week with the second round of designers. And I spent an hour and a half with these designers and one after another, just sharing their blown away aha moments from having these six weeks with Sarah. So a huge congratulations to Sarah for such a successful program and to these designers for, you know, making, you know, the line in the sand and saying, that's it. I want to put my business on a process. So hands off to all of you. But here's the next thing that's coming. In later this summer, Tracy Connell is going to teach you buy wholesale for profit. That's right. This entire course is going to teach you how to stop buying retail and how to buy wholesale so that you can make more profit, just like Terry is saying. Uh, Tracy's going to teach how to set up accounts, figuring out what to sell things for, conversations about the margins, the whole thing. Tracy Connell is a hashtag seasoned designer, and she has built a $3 million interior design firm from the ground up. She runs a tight ship that generates an exceptional living for herself and her team. She knows how to execute execute an organized project, and she knows how to make them profitable. Okay, so she is going to be on the show on Friday, June 12th, and we are going to be explaining in more detail this newest course to you coming out later this summer, 2020. So mark your calendars to listen to that show when it airs, all right? And when the registration is open, it will be at buywholesaleforprofit.com, Buy wholesaleforprofit.com. All right. Now, my great thanks to Terry for spending some time with me today and thank you all of you for showing up and um, just, you know, just being here and being part of this. I'm so grateful for you. I know that I feel like I've been leaning into that a lot more and I just keep getting these waves of gratitude for everything that is happening here. Um, seeing a lot of it on social media and the letters and the reviews and the emails that you send me and um, I'm there with you. That's what I'm trying to say is that more and more are reaching out to me and sharing your heartfelt sentiments on this community that we've created together and I'm just really Really wanting you to know I'm there with you on it and I'm feeling it and I'm sending it right back to you. All right, so go out today and decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.